In this video, I will be teaching you how to sketch the graph of a function involving modulus. So just as a quick recap, the absolute value or modulus of a number is the magnitude of that number without regard to sign. So for example, if we take the modulus or the absolute value of 4, that would be the same thing as taking the modulus or absolute value of negative 4 because both of these numbers have the same magnitude, which is 4, and when we take the absolute value, we do not regard the sign, so they are both equal to 4. Over here, we have a very basic example of a function involving modulus. We have the function y is equal to the absolute value of x, and we already know what this means. This means that y is equal to the magnitude of x without regard to sign. But how would this look in a graph? Let's start by drawing our axis. Is So we have our x-axis, our y-axis. Let's label this 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So whenever you're drawing the graph of a modulus function, the first step is to draw the graph without regard to modulus. That means drawing the graph of y is equal to x. And we already know what this will look like. It's just a straight line going through the origin, something like this, passing through the point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. But one thing that we notice over here is that our function or our graph goes below 0. But when we look back to our equation, y is equal to the absolute value of x, we know that the value of y will always be positive. And this is obviously because we're taking the absolute value of x. So that means that this part of our graph below the x-axis should technically not exist. What we need to do now is we reflect this part of our graph, this part where y is negative, in the x-axis. So that will look something like this. So while we have the value negative 1, negative 1 over here, that becomes the value of negative 1, 1. And while we have negative 2, negative 2 over here, we get the value of 2, or negative 2, 2. So the graph of our modulus function should look like this. Let's look at another example. Let's say what would happen if we took the equation y is equal to the negative absolute value of x. Well, one thing we can tell right away by looking at this question is that it will always be negative. And that is because the absolute value of x, or this part of our equation, will always be positive. And since we're taking the negative value of this, our final value will always be negative. So over here, y will always be negative. So once again, let's draw the graph. We have our y-axis and our x-axis, say 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So once again, we start out by drawing the graph of our equation without regard to modulus. So we draw the graph of y is equal to negative x. And we know what that looks like. It goes through the origin and runs with a downward slope of negative 1. But once again, we know in this equation that y will always be negative. Therefore, this part of our graph over here cannot exist because in this part of our graph, our value for y is positive. So over here, we need to do the opposite of what we did last time. So we take the reflection of this part of our graph in the x-axis, and that will look something like this. So whereas this point is negative 1, 1, this point would be negative 1, negative 1, whereas this would be negative 2, 2, this would be a negative 2, negative 2. So our final modulus graph should look something like this. Let's look at another example. 
So what would it look like if we're not taking the absolute value of our whole equation? So for example, over here, we're only taking the absolute value of x, not of negative 1. So we start similarly when solving these types of equations. So we draw our axis, y-axis, our x-axis. We make our points 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3. And once again, we first draw the graph without regard to the absolute value sign. So we draw the graph of y is equal to x minus 1. So this has a y-intercept at negative 1 and a slope of 1. So it should look like this. However, in this equation, y is neither always positive nor is it always negative. But one thing that we do know about this equation is that this part of our equation, or the absolute value of x, is always positive. So what we want to do here is we want to find the minimum or the lowest possible value of our graph. And that will occur when the number inside of our absolute value sign is equal to 0. So that happens when x is equal to 0. And this is because we know that this number inside of an absolute value is always either greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, the lowest possible point in our graph is when x is equal to 0. And we see that at this point, x is equal to 0. And since this is our minimum point, we know that Nothing below this exists, so let's make this a dotted line. So this over here does not exist. Now what we need to do is we need to once again reflect our graph, but this time we're not doing it along the x-axis. This time we're doing it along this point because this is the lowest possible point in our graph. So we make the reflection of this line will look like this. So the final graph for our absolute value function should look like this.